presenter's uh, slides. If we have questions, can we have them now? a while ago just before chapel was uh, sustainability and socio-economic empowerment along uh, dairy value chains and um, essentially uh, prof talked about um, the fact some of the things I took from that uh, presentation sustainability um, is working with nature and ensuring or avoiding what will damage the environment. I'm just trying to recap one or two things. All right. Um, how many of us have questions uh, for Professor Moshud? On the presentation we had before the chapel. No questions? Prophet Seto. <laughs> Prophet appears no questions, sir. When they understood everything, perhaps too much. Can you please put your hands together to appreciate uh, Professor uh, Mashud Belewu? Please, we can do better. Those of us not eating, let's appreciate him. Thank you very much, Prof. We appreciate you, sir. All right. Um, Thank you very much, sir. As we move on in this international conference, we will move to the next item on the agenda, which is going to be another plenary session by two of our amazing speakers. I crave your indulgence to please give them a round of applause while I call them uh, to come to the front. The first presenter for this plenary session will be Dr. T. Amole. Can we give him a round of applause, please? You're welcome, sir. Dr. T. Amole, please come forward, sir. I would also like to invite to the front seat the second speaker for this afternoon's session. He is no other person than Professor Olufemi Onifade. Please do well to give him a round of applause as he comes forward. You're welcome, Prof. And to chair this very interesting plenary session is no other person than our mother, Professor Aderemi. Please give her a round of applause as she makes her way to the front. Please keep clapping till she sits in front. You're welcome, ma. So I'll hand over the microphone to her as she chairs this next plenary session. You're welcome, ma. Thank you very much. Can we please put our hands together for the two presenters again? I know our mouth might be busy, but our hand can work. Right. Okay. Can we have Dr. Amole 
to do his presentation. Round of applause as he comes up. I don't wish to stand on existing protocols because uh, most of the time we have broken the neck of protocol, keep standing on its neck always. Uh, two disclaimers, or oh, before then, my name is Tunde Amole. I'm the country director for International Livestock Research Institute, the Nigeria office. International Livestock Research Institute is based in Nairobi, Kenya. The Nigeria office is within the IITA campus in Ibadan. Uh, I wasn't supposed to be here. The Organizers invited uh, 20 minutes, fine. Dr. Akonde, Dr. Debo Wale Akonde, who is the executive advisor to the governor of Oyo State. Boy, is a mechan is an agri mechanization expert, so he asked me to stand in for him. So I'm standing him for the executive advisor of the governor of Oyo State. Two disclaimers. Number one, I was called to sit down and my academic father was also called to sit beside me. And in my village, they said, if the elephant should blow, the sun should not attempt to blow. So I'm not going to blow again. I'm just going to scratch the surface and allow him to do the work because what will I tell him? What will I be saying when my second degree and third degree supervisor is here? So what do I tell him? <laughs> I want to sincerely appreciate you, sir. And I will always do that. Indeed, I have not traveled too much around the world, but I discovered that the world is actually spherical. Because right with me, I came with our media and communication expert who has been communicating with the organizers here. Unfortunately, he is the last born of my father, my academic father. So we have the Unifadis family here. <laughs> Again, Friesland Campina, I read your disclaimer outside that you're taking recording and at your discretion you can use it. Please try to consult us because we are also an international organization and we have policies that guide our appearance in things we do. Again and again, livestock is life. Anywhere I go, I see animals. I see livestock. Right in this room, I can see a lot of livestock. If you are a livestock, let me see your hand. You will be surprised. I will remove a lot of shoes here today. I will, take, I will go home with a lot of bags, all your leather bags and your leather belt and your leather shoes. So if you're in livestock, or if you have livestock around you, let me see you today. All right, so we are all livestock. <laughs> the chairman said we are all higher animals. So it becomes very strange when we listen to people from some other climbs that tell us that livestock is a trouble. It's because they want to recolonize us. That's why they do that. Everything about horse in Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa, is about livestock. And it's life. And we will continue to promote livestock. In one of the meetings I attended sometimes last day, I remember that... An inspiration just jumped into my head, and I remember that when God created man and put him in the garden, and man was asked to eat everything in the garden, including the crop and everything. But one day, man had a crop, fruit. Of course, when we were in some beam, they told us, 
maybe some people just wanted us to be. They told us it was apple. So growing up to know apple, I really don't want to eat apple. But I realize that when men fell by taking crop and men became naked, the only thing God used to salvage his nakedness was livestock. So why can somebody come and tell me that he's a vegetarian? Well, I, you know, funniest thing, in my organization, we have some vegetarians. I used to challenge them. I said, what are you doing in livestock research? So, livestock is life. It's all about us. And for as many of us that are in livestock, we are the life giver. So we will look at brief thing about livestock and dairy, then give the example from the Oyo State angle, since I'm representing the executive advisor to the state. It has been discovered that the first 1,000 days of every man's life, if you lack the animal source protein, you will have a brain retardation that is irreversible. In other words, one of the major sources of livestock, I mean animal source protein, is milk, is egg. But today, since we are dealing with milk, so if we remove dairy from our diet, particularly the first 1,000 days of a man's life, we will continue to have human beings whose head, whose brain, is retarded in such a way that when you are driving on the road and there is a little hold-up or what we call traffic, you see people forming three, four, five lines and you are wondering, where are you going? If we are going to erase such in our community, we must continue to promote dairy because one of the things that retard human beings' brain is lack of animal source protein. And because of increase in population, it was two weeks ago they released our new estimated population. We are now two on two sixteen thousand two sixteen million. And I remember when I was in Burkina Faso some four years back, the whole of Burkina Faso was sixteen million. So and I rem so another country has joined us. We are in for it. So because of that, we must continue to look for how to produce more, how to increase our production, particularly in terms of dairy. While we face a lot of trouble in terms of climate change, we must produce milk in a sustainable way. And we have also seen that what the animal gives you in terms of milk is what you have given the animal. In other words, human nutrition is linked to livestock nutrition. So I wonder, a lot of international organizations are spending money to promote human nutrition, nutrition security, and we leave livestock nutrition and nutrition security for livestock. I said in a place, I said we are all gathered here and we are talking about livestock, but we are not talking about his feed. If someone dressed like a full animal now enter this door and drop a bag and run away, what will you do? Even if Buari is here, they will need to just wheel him out. So if we don't give attention to what gives us nutrition, then we start having problems. Livestock in Nigeria, if the statistic is correct, we don't know. But do you know that the history told us that in 1931, clarified butter fat were being exported from this country to the UK? Sir? Yes. During the World War I, from this same Bokolo, from this same white Fulani, from these same animals that we have said they have low productivity. 1931, Nigeria was exporting clarified butter fat from Fulani, white Fulani animals to the United Kingdom. So when somebody comes to tell me that we don't have good animals, I challenge you. 
Is it not because you are not getting better things from it again? The World War, and there was no importation or exportation to the UK. They depended on cheese from Nigeria. And that developed vom in those days. So my question is, if in 1931 we can export clarified butter meat, what is happening in 2022? What has gone wrong? Why are we not getting it? Who has told us that we can't get it? Who has told us our animals are bad? I was asking one of my friends, and he said, maybe from here we get 1.2 liters, 1.6 liters. I mean, from maybe White Fulani or Bokolo here. But in Ibadan, we have animals that we get 9 liters from them, and they are... They are local breed. The least we got was four, four liters. Least. We were making yogurt and we were drinking in the office from Bokolo, from Bokolo. Nine liters, six liters. If your management is good, these animals are good. They are not bad. Beautiful, we can do uh, genetic improvement. That's fine. But we have what it takes to survive within our environment. So we should think, as we are doing this conference, that a time is coming, even if we don't export any longer, we are self-sufficient in dairy in Nigeria. A time is coming that our children will not grow up. You see, a child was asked a question in nursery school. He said, where does milk come from? He said, it's a powder. It's a grain that they grind to become powder. But they used to draw a cattle around the, around the can. We don't know where it come from. Because from his first day on heart, till he's now six, seven years old, he has never seen a liquid make. It's all powder. Yes, we have challenges. But in our organization, we don't call challenges challenges. They are opportunities. I'll give you an example. If our ACs are not enough and some of us are sweating. We say, yes, it's a problem. It's not a problem. It's an opportunity to buy more AC. That's what it means. When something is scarce, there is a market for it. It's an opportunity. So let's start looking at every challenges that we are going to discuss briefly as opportunities to improve our livestock industry. Yes, feed and feeding issue. That's critical. That's number one. 70, 60, 65 percent, whichever percent of the input that you are going to put in getting dairy is the feed. Fortunately, feed are site specific. What grows in here does not grow there, over there. So identify the best feed you can have where you have it and let the animals be, be well fed. Determine, I mean, try and see what's the What's the nutritional requirement of these animals you have at different stages of life? And you provide what they will eat for them. We have grasses. We have different type of grasses growing well in Nigeria. Someone sent, someone sent to me, of course, because we have some link with the, with the state government. They sent some link that a, one of the states in Nigeria brought some Cambodians with some special grass. They call them naps. He says they are super napia. So the former governor called and said, go and get me these grasses. I said, if you come to IT, they are growing there. You don't need to go to Cambodia. Unfortunately, there is no grass that, goes, that grows two meters in 12 weeks. No way. What will Nigeria learn from Cambodia, if not poverty? How do you go and go to Cambodia to come and say people should come and plant grasses for us when there's a whole department of pasture and range in the Federal University of Agriculture in Abekuta? And they come and make strange claims. Things that never happen to come and confuse us. Can we develop our own system? Can we have multi-location trials of all our grasses, all of our, product, all our forages and know what grows where? The yield of Brachyria here will not be the yield of Brachyria in Niger State. Yes, because of the agroecology. But there will be a better grass, a better feed in that area. Every location has its own feed advantage. Stay with it and feed your animal with it. 
genetic conservation before improvement. If you have time, please just try to Google West African dwarf goat or the Nigerian goat in Australia. You will agree with me that our Nigerian goat is well popular in Australia than in Nigeria because it costs 5,000 to 6,000 Australian dollars to buy a kid of the West African goat in Australia because the milk is the best all over the world and people from the United Arab Emirates are moving over there to develop the West African goods, to give them milk that they will use to do a lot of cosmetics and they will ship back to Africa. And they call it West African dwarf. I'm asking, is there dwarfism in the genetics of the animal? Absolutely no. Because it's short. What is short? Short is relative. If I want to describe you, I will not say you are tall because you are not taller than me. But there are shorter people here to you. Are they short? No. They are also taller than somebody. So you say our animals are not bad. Lord, let's, let's erode them. Let's go and do multiplication. I agree with us. We must improve our animals. And honestly speaking, even the animals we are bringing to improve our animals are not local animals over there. They are not. They were improved upon over the years. Over 50, 60 years. So we are using improvement to improve our own. No problem. But can we develop our own? And can we conserve those genes? Otherwise, one day, we will import white fulani into Nigeria. There's something in those animals. We can use Greylando. We can use anything to develop them. But genetic conservation must be our priority. And genetic improvement. Dairy does not just survive alone. Dairy has a value chain. And we must believe in the value chain and identify, do the value chain mapping, identify who are the actors at each of the points of the value chain and strengthen each of them. The financial you know, house, those who are going to be feeders, those who are going to be feed producers, those who are going to be milkers, those who are going to be milk collectors, we should identify who is playing what role and strengthen each of them. Again, we cannot overrule the role of women. But you know, our system is funny. Even when you empower women, when that thing is yielding, the man comes to take over. And he takes over to marry another woman. <laughs> but the role of women must be strengthened. And the, easy, and, and, and the main thing is that it is easier for women to make gain from dairy and put it in household use than for men. So let us identify where the strength of women are in our dairy value chain and strengthen it. Again, one thing is still lacking in our dairy development in Nigeria. What are the forms that we take dairy in Nigeria? We take milk, yes, after milk. Cheese. Very few people take cheese anyway. Yogurt. How many people are taking yogurt this week? How many people are taking cheese this week? How many people are taking milk today, at least? So you look at it that we have very limited dietary diversity in, from dairy. Dairy has not been infused into our diet. You know why cassava is well grown in Nigeria? Uh, in all over the world, we are the largest producer of cassava. Do you understand? We have a lot of products from cassava. Gari, Lafu, Fufu, Tapioca, Kukuru, Five, Starch, Flour, Deceiviate, Yes, Making Hate. Okay, I mean bread, flour, yeah. Peels, Ethanol, Making Ten. So we will grow it. How many products do we have from milk that we take? So ask me, where is the market for milk while we are pushing for dairy improvement? Can we start from the market and drive the market? Can milk be put in, in meals? Thank you, 50 meals. Why they say, okay, let us go and do... What do they use to, to steal money like this now? Uh, school, school feeding. And it's egg. Can we not do milk? 
Can we not do cheese? Over there, they finish cheese. They even wrap it and wrap it and put it in something we can eat like snack free and ship it to us here. So, there is market. If we develop a lot of dietary, you know, options. And that's why we will need our people in the food and nutrition to support us in this. Innovation in research must continue. And lastly, there must be collaboration. The private, the public, the development partnership must go on. There must be a community of practice. I am sad to let you know that a lot of dairy development research are going on in this country that you and I don't even know about. Yes. I speak to them in the Federal Ministry of Agri very well, and I was asking them of a dairy project that we are supporting here in Ocean State, and they said they don't know about it. And it's called National Dairy, blah, 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 and you don't know about it. Bowen is doing, I, this one is doing, everybody is doing, and there is no area of convergence. There's no synergy for me to know, okay, so in Bowen you have crossed your animal now, and we are expecting the F1 of the Greenland, okay, what's the yield, what's the, what's the sex rate, what's, and somebody is picking it up from there, and we are telling the farmers, okay, this is possible, and that's why research has not gone far. Somebody came and brought in some animals, and now you have crossed them, and now even the crosses of those animals are still being sold for 800,000. Who is going to buy it? Because there is no synergy. All right. In your state, what have we been doing to put some of the few things we have shared in perspective? And I must talk about this, so, or else they will not allow me to cross that river back to the state. Can I tell you that the land area in Oyo State is bigger than the whole country called Rwanda? Agricultural land in Oyo State is big enough to swallow the whole of Rwanda. And the government of the day have seen that agriculture is what we should put the whole of our resources into. So they set up to develop the old... Uh, 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 this or your state uh, development, blah, 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 has become or your state agribusiness development agency, looking at where we can turn agriculture to agribusiness and to see how to strengthen that business. And then that model is using the private, the public, and the development partnership, PPDP, you know, that's what we call it. We have a lot of each of these, which I will not bother you because of time. But where I'm going is this. This has beginning to draw investors into the state, particularly in the area of agriculture, dairy as a focus, thanks to Friesland Campina. So already now, in your state, we are developing, I'm going to talk about this suit. The state is looking at constructing roads and rehabilitation of roads that leads to farms because there is no development without infrastructure and it must come from that end when roads that lead to farm are well done then you see people who are willing to practice agribusiness now we are developing what we call the SAPZ which is special agri agro agro industrial processing zone now we are putting security in place because now in Nigeria when you sleep, you sleep with one and a half eyes. The other eyes is either open or you are using it to check what is around you. But this is where I'm going. There is, a, there is an industrial estate that is going on in the old Fashola. Some of us will know Fashola. Fashola this is Fashola now. It's, go, it's, it's already happening now. And the old state is to make sure that everything called agriculture, including dairy, and now Friesland Campina has been given about 300 hectares of land. Is that correct? Yes, I'm aware of that. Within the estate, 300 hectares of land to grow pasture and to empower 20 youth with at least 5 to 10 animals each. And that's why we must bring in the youth into this business. 5 to 10 animals each, and they have the pasture there, and Friesland Campina will be setting up their own milking collection there. Like 
a pilot. And we hope to do that in all the six geopolitical zones of the state. Particularly to drive daily and to see that things are moving on in that aspect. I won't bother you with this. These are a lot of success stories that we all know about. Maybe this was also presented yesterday, uh, you know, in their mail collection. So far, in, it's only in Oyo State that Friesland Campina is collecting the highest number, I mean, highest volume of milk. Again, pasture, which I know that my father will be talking more about, is very critical, and this will be taking place on that, on that, on that agro-industrial zone. This will be done by Erie, I believe. Do you know that we make A in Southwest? Yes, and this is the best time to make A in Southwest. A bit of this A is 1,000 naira. And by calculation, from half an hectare, you can get about 1,002 bales of hay. That's 1.2. And this is from Bracaria that grows to give you this in four months. So even if you have a wasted area of land in your, in your environment, make sure it's secured. I'm sure if you go into pasture, you will also be contributing to the value chain in, uh, along the dairy value chain. Thank you very much. Let me just... Another round of applause for our speaker. That was a very wonderful one. Thank you for that presentation. I think we'll reserve the question time till after the second presenter so that we can take the two together. Professor Onifade, can you please take the floor? Good afternoon, everyone. Let me continue on the existing protocol that has been laid since yesterday, so as not to waste much time. Just uh, two or three brief comments before I, before I continue. I don't want us to be surprised that what we've been hearing since yesterday may be the same thing. It all goes a long way to show that is either dairy production is important or not important. Because right from the time the, uh, Mr. Ben Lagarde talked yesterday up to the last speaker, and what we will also learn at the, I mean, what will also present at the oral, uh, oral presentations, they appear to be the same thing in different ways, just to signify the importance of dairy production. So that's the first one. The second one is that uh, it is always said that children will, be, will grow older than the, I mean, will be greater than the children, I mean, than the parents, isn't it? You can see what has happened. I may not present better than that. And then lastly, coincidentally, coincidentally, I wore the same type of clothes with him today. And yet we didn't even know. Eh? And yet we didn't even know. So that's just on the uh, light mode. Forage-based feeds for dairy cattle, implications for the livestock industries. We're going to talk about introduction, methods of talking dairy cattle, total mixed ration. Then we take a few cases from some other countries, then we come back home before we now talk about the implications of forage-based system in the livestock industry in Nigeria. Yes, it's been referred to that milk is the first food in life, true or false, especially for higher, which, uh, which class of animal is that? 
Uh -huh. Mamas, thank you very much. I won't bother us too much about all this introduction. Just suffice to say that consumption of milk and dairy products is expected to grow faster than domestic production in Africa and in the Middle East. The demand, on the other hand, is also going to is growing in the East and the Southeast Asia likewise. In the developed nations, these milk and dairy products are in excess. And so they can afford to export to other countries, either a skimmed or whole milk, yogurt, cheese, condensed milk, and so on and so forth, onto, I mean, to us who have not got to that stage. Nigeria import, imported 1.3 billion worth of milk and dairy products in 2020. What I mean by more than two-thirds of this local production is that what we are producing in Nigeria is less, I mean, it's, it's less than one-third of what we actually imported. So if we can build, I mean, bridge that gap, we'll be saving uh, revenue. Is this dependency on importation that is our bone of contention now. How do we do, how do we go about that so that we can meet the needs of our citizens? For some of our, for our students, what we call uh, grazing, is it grazing method now? It's not actually grazing method, but stocking method. Things keep on changing. There are no methods of grazing. Grazing is grazing. But how you stock the animal is the most important thing. So they now talk about stocking methods. We have what you call creep grazing, first and last, rotational set and strip stocking. I won't go too much into that now. But we'll go more into total mixed ration which we see in the next slide here. Total mixed ration TMR is a primary feeding system for dairy cows. More especially in most of Europe, US, and parts of Southern Hemisphere. On the other hand, countries like Ireland and New Zealand, they are based their milk uh, dairy production is, is based more on pasture bees. And it is I mean, it's still considered more effective in conducive regions of that place. Total mixed ration is basically nutritionally formulated feed mix, combining feeds formulated to a specific nutrient content. What is available in uh, Iwo area here will be different from what is available in Niger State or Sokoto State. But when we are talking of total mixed ration, available resources or ingredients are mixed together to be able to cater for the animals, I mean for the dairy animals. So you can have Basically, it will contain forages, either as grass silage, hay or straw, or one grain or the other. Oat, corn, wheat, barley, millet, talk. then protein feed must be there. Soybean, cotton seed, linseed, and granite. Whichever one is available in the locality, you do it. And then mineral and all other byproducts there. Yeah. Some of the advantages of total mixed ration are this. Instead of allowing your animals to, to, be, to be rustled, at least they are safe under, uh, they are safe from such and then from extremes of climate, climatic condition. 
You are able to measure the intake of the animals when they are indoors. You are also able to regulate their dry matter intake. You get higher milk yield because of the higher concentrate that you feed them. And then you have increase in stocking rates because when you cut and go and feed or mix, there's less trampling and you get more forage for the animals to use, I mean for the animals to feed on. On the other hand, when you confine uh, animals, some of the challenges <laughs> you find is that it will restrict their natural behavior. Secondly, it can contribute to prevalence of some diseases and uh, some of the management factors that has been attributed to limbness are zero grazing, uncomfortable stock, I mean, yes, stall, walking or standing on damaged surfaces or on slurry. It could also be a form, I mean, be from infectious diseases. There's also what you call partial mixed ration. It's just a way of giving the total, I mean, giving the mixed ration on feed pad between grazing time and when they are indoors. When cows are grazed outdoor in groups, it provides opportunities for cows to express natural, normal behavior, such as social contact and herd hierarchy in the place. Now, just as uh, Professor Billy Wu also said earlier on, when you feed animal, I mean, dairy cows on forage-based system, the fat and protein content of the milk is likely to increase. Likewise, when you feed, consumption of energy is less when the animals are pasture-based. Pasture and then issues such as mastitis are greatly reduced. Uh, the number of days that animals graze, spend grazing out outdoors in some temperate countries vary from 150 to 240 days, especially during the summer. And when there's cold, there's snow outside, which way do we go in Nigeria? Are we going to allow our animals to be year-round grazing? Or are we going to keep them indoors for some time? And when there's no feed, you put them. When there's feed, you, you put them in. I mean, when, you, when there's feed, you put them outside. And when there's no feed, you put them out. I mean, you put them indoors. So, in Nigeria, we have the extensive, semi-intensive, and intensive grazing management. So let me also correct this uh, term. There's nothing like open grazing. What you actually have is extensive grazing management being done. If you have open grazing, then what is, clo uh, what is close grazing? But because we didn't have the right tab terminology, we just say uh, no to open grazing. No to... But then anyway, people understood. But it's not a terminology for forage-based system. Now, in Brazil, just among one of, I mean, one of the many experiments carried out then was that the you know, Brazil is also in the tropics. It's also in the tropics. So some of the grasses we are talking about here grow there. Now, they used crossbred cows and grazed them rotationally at the stocking rate of 4.5 to 5.2, about the same thing. And they found out that the milk yield, 8 to 9.1 kilograms, per cow per day, and the chemical compositions of the milk did not differ among the grass types. 
But the funny thing is that, or the most prominent thing is that, over the six months period, they found out that dry matter intake was significantly higher with panicum maximum than the other grasses. So what we are saying is that the species you plant, in a way, animals behave differently when they are offered. In Kenya, farmers had on average one hectare of land and 2.2 lactating cows, which yields 8.93 kilograms of milk per day. Feed intake of 10.5 kilograms dry matter per day. And then the species they used were what you also have in Nigeria here, rose grass, rose grass, a green napier grass, Lucine desmodium, Leucina, and Caliandra. It was recommended that to improve milk yield, farmers need to harvest less matured grasses, add more legumes to the diet, and increase the concentrate feed. This will help the dairy animals not to exert from their own body for milk production, but to just be right for milk production. In Nigeria, what do we have? We have pastoralist, semi-urban and semi-urban, peri-urban dairy farmers. You have commercial farmers and importers. I won't deliberate too much on that, but suffice to say that the milk from the farmer accounts for almost 95% of all domestic production. And most of these dairy animals, they have access to little or no supplementary feed. This is a typical homestead for uh, those who keep animals, those who keep uh, cattle, more in Nigeria, the Fulanis. You see their huts. If it gets burnt, they can always, re they can always touch again. But the mud wall is still there. And this is how cattle are fettered for the night. Just as someone pointed out yesterday, they will eat here, defecate here, and everything here, which ought not to be. Um, okay. Uh, since yesterday, we knew that women play key roles in the production, processing, and marketing of the milk. We cannot deny that. So I think we should continue to encourage them for that. Commercial farmers, farms are usually fed indoors. That is, the animals are usually fed indoors with concentrate, fresh, and conserved feeds. The importers, who are the third uh, players in the dairy sector of this nation, they account for 60% of market share. They import powdered milk, condensed milk, evaporated milk, infant formula, and fermented products from foreign countries. Now, implications. Just as I mentioned earlier on, in one way or the other, if you want to enhance milk production in the country, it comes with implications. We must be ready. We must be ready to solve some of these problems, such that effort into dairy production will not be in vain. The first one is intensified production of improved forages. We cannot deny that fact. One, because the range land that uh, most of the livestock, many of the livestock depend on, is already de being degraded, being degraded. And just as we mentioned earlier on, people are no longer encouraging extensive grazing. You let your animal graze on range land, graze anywhere. It's no longer feasible in this nation. And then, 
aspect of forage uh, establishment and production, which has been limited to research institutes, universities, and so on and so forth, is now gaining ground with many people going into it. But there is low level of conservation for dry season, especially at the uh, I mean, at the smallholder scale, the, there's very low level of conservation for dry season. And that's why we record, I mean, why they record low milk production, low animal, low life weight gain during the dry season. But when, there's, when the rainy season is there, they, they pick up. Then, suffice to, for us to also know that Livestock, they don't have public holidays and they don't have weekends. They must feed. How many of us can afford not to feed our chicken for two days? Layers especially. You can't. So it is. If you want milk, come Saturday, come Sunday, you must make arrangements for the animals to, to get something. When we intensify production of improved forages, there's regular source of income through conserved feed, just as uh, Dr. Amali said the other time. I'm sure he didn't mention it, but they have done a research whereby those who cut fresh forages for livestock, I mean for livestock in the cattle market, he may tell us later on the amount of money they make from uh, cutting fresh forages for livestock. Then we need to intensify training on aspects of forage production. This is also part of youth employment schemes for those who are ready to take it. The second implication is that we need more farmers, we need more farms to keep dairy cows. Just as I mentioned earlier, we cannot overemphasize that. Whether you are a youth or you want to do it as a hobby, we need more people to go into dairy farming. We need more people to go into dairy farming. Uh, my your upcoming generations, this is an opportunity for you. And then you can also, it's easy to integrate forages into farming system, which will make it easier to combine both uh, forages and and greens. This will entail more land, labor, water supply, disposal of waste, extension service, and so on will be required. We also need more private farms, commercial farms, at least those who can keep a hundred plus cow, if the money is there, if they have sufficient capital. I'm sure fresh, I mean, fresh land campaigner will be able to tell us maybe roughly what it may take to keep a hundred dairy cow, and process the milk, sell, and so on and so forth. I'm also emphasizing that it is good we replicate good things that we have in the country. We have Milk Opa, which was established in 1981 in Kaduna State. It is still running. Oyo State, in Oyo State, uh, to, in, com, I mean, cooperation with Fri, I mean, Friesland, Campina, and Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, they are also working, just as has been said. And then OSIDA strategy is also another one. So whatever we can replicate, Bowen is also coming up. And just as Freshland Campina said yesterday, they are working in seven states. We need more of this in different states, and even in the states where they are now. And lastly, for more farms, we need to monitor the existing rangeland effectively to prevent it from further degradation. The third one, and I've talked to the, to the fourth uh, implica I mean, limitation, I mean, implication before we finish. Now, the availability of inputs for forage production. We are talking of forage, talking of forage. How do we multiply them? One, we need seeds. We need seeds. A kilogram of Bracuria uh, resistances, which many people know, or even mulatto, 
it ranged from 3,000 to 5,000 naira per hectare, I mean per kilo. Eh? 7,000. Okay. Can you imagine? A kilogram of forage seed selling for 7,000 is costlier than a kilo of rice, costlier than a kilo of beans. So, uh, I, I mean, in one of our lectures, I asked one of our students, I said, if I want to buy 50 kilograms of a particular seed from you, and I said I will pay you a thousand naira for every kilo that you give me, a thousand naira for every kilo, because I know I'm going to increase it. They say, no, they can't do it. They say, no, they can't do it. I said, then I told them, whatever you want to do and you put your mind to it, you can always do it. Even if you yourself cannot do it, you can get some, you, I mean, boys around doing nothing. Tell them, please collect this thing for me, I need it. You can pay them 600 naira per, for every kilo they collect. They'll be happy at it. You get your own one kilo, one kilo you give me at one, I mean, 1,000 per, I give you 1,000 per kilo. You have already made 400 on every kilogram of, what do you call it, that you collect. So I pray we all get this, at, I mean, at the right time. We need machine, sorry. We need machinery, tractor driven, farm structure, irrigation facilities, then financial institutions with good government policy be ready to give loans at interest not beyond one digit. The other areas of concern are that he has mentioned uh, indigenous breeds through crossbreeding of exotic with zebu. Selection is, takes a long time, but except we start it, we cannot, we can, we do, I mean, we, except we start it, we'll be deceiving ourselves. The thing is, I know some in Napri, some people started working on dairy cow to improve it. When there was no fund, they left it, and now they went to poultry, because poultry is easier. So, I mean, just feed your birds, within five months you get the eggs. Unlike dairy cattle, you have to wait for two, three years, depend on the offspring, and so on and so forth, before you say you start that. Now, the welfare and reproductive health of the cows are also essential. Uh, Mr. Adekunle mentioned yesterday, fabrication of equipment, especially locally, we must be ready to do that. Then, data collection is very, very, very essential. Students, graduates to be, wherever you are working, whether in a Greek system, please make sure you take data collection very, very seriously. Make sure you take data collection very seriously. Uh, we have a student in Netherlands. Her work is to, uh, uh, to model what, I mean, how, I mean, milk production. When a, I remember a particular grass was fed to dairy animals, and she's not collecting any new data. The data is already there. All she needs to do is look at the data which has been kept maybe for many years, worked on them. So the importance of data is and uh, I think lastly, okay, not lastly, ranching. When we have ranching, it's an encompassing enterprise. When someone keeps cow, at least you get winners, you get uh, calves from them. You get winners, which you can sell. You get bulls, which can also sell if you are not keeping it. You have heifers. If, you are not, if they are not replacement, you keep the ones that you want, and so on and so forth. So, uh, aspect of greenhouse gas emission was said, was repeated earlier in the morning, financing of projects, pricing of milk and products, and so on and so forth. So, and lastly, what should be the extent of automation in the farm? Are we going to continue to use hand milking, or 
our engineers will develop some other things, some other ways of doing it. Waste management is also very crucial. Provision of water. Human beings do not have water to drink, talk less of animals. But it's also important because what the, animals, what the dairy animal will give you is what you will drink. Then access road to production sites, among others, that has also been emphasized. These are what government must put in place in order to be able to enhance dairy production. Thank you very much. Can we please give a standing ovation to both father and mother now? Academic father and mother. I mean, academic father and son, sorry. Can we please give a round of applause to both academic father and son? God bless you. You can please be seated. Uh, we want to appreciate God for the presentation. Professor Nifade gave us in depth into forage based feeds for dairy cattle, implication for the livestock industry in Nigeria. Why Dr. Tunde Amole, the country representative in Iri, gave us insight into food security through dairy production, the Oyo State Agribusiness Development Agency strategy, the former OSADEP. And in the course of their delivery, we were told that a thousand days without animal protein will lead to having retarded brain. And if we really want to avoid that, then we must know that livestock is life. A round of applause now. Now, do we have questions? or areas where you want them to expatiate more. Yes, sir, Dr. Ayondiji. Uh, my question is for Dr. Nifade. Uh, we, since yesterday we have been talking of that we need more animals, more animals crossbreeding. Now your perception now, I want you to expatiate are you saying we need more local breeds, indigenous breeds, so that we can get the same quantity of the, ex the, the exotic breed we give us? Number two, from your institute, all these researches, how do people get information about it? Uh, this is a major challenge. Institutes are having information, farmers are not getting it. And the third thing, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this, are the Oyo State issue, are the youth uh, for this pilot program, do they all study agri? Which areas? Then are they interested in agriculture or because their father is a close politician, that's where they are co-opted into the system? Then what is the sustainability of this program? Bearing in mind that the government is having a maximum of eight years, and after that eight years, what happened to the system? Thank you. More questions? Yes, Professor Shanguyomi. Thank you very much. Mine is a comment, and it goes to Dr. Amoli. I'm really excited to hear about the establishment of farming communities within Nigeria. This is the key to the success story of Israeli agriculture. They normally establish what we call in their land, Hebrew kibbutz. This kibbutz is just for farmers. They live there, they have mini schools, especially elementary schools. They have clinics. And they are just like a community on their own. Young people don't have anything to do with the town or with the city. 
they are so excited. The road network is perfect. And internet access is there 24 hours. You can book for your tomato from the US right on that farm. And arrangements are made to convey your produce to you. So, sir, it would be a laudable thing if there can be continuity and expansion of this vision because it's really the road to real success. There is a output, when there is a, when people are getting better life from what they are doing, they don't have to run around. They will stay. And uh, Baba Wolowo started something like this many years back. Uh, he established farming communities. Most of them today, they have been abandoned. I, during a survey of Ocean State, I encountered only one in the uh, Oshogbo area, Ifon Oshogbo area, where we still have that community in existence. But the school is highly dilapidated. If you don't have a school for the farmer's children, they will run away. They want their children to also become professors. So they will run away and go and stay in town so that the children can go to good schools. So I want us to really look into this and uh, ensure that it's really a working system, especially when education and health is added to the package. Thank you. That's, that's a message for His Excellency. Uh -huh. Continuity in policy. All right, sir. Yes, sir, Prof. To the Oyo State representative, the first question is uh, on the diversity. Diversity is very key. You did not uh, explain more on that diversity in dairy value chain. Because one thing we tend to encounter is that the farmers are not getting the best out of their milk production. So what is, you don't understand. OK, diversity. When you produce the milk, what are the other values you add to it? Right, either by yes, value addition, so that this value addition, as you've mentioned, the uh, full need will not only be producing either yogurt or whatever, some other value addition to be added. Then on the prof, the last speaker, Ma, I carry out an experiment, uh, not an experiment, a project under the, uh, uh, I mean, under education. I worked on uh, nomadic education. So I want us, all the stakeholders in dairy value chain, we should work as a team. One, we must form networking. What they are doing in all your states, the federal says they don't know. So we need networking, right? If not, because of the efforts of the organizer of this team, some people will not be aware. That's one. The second one is that all the stakeholders should come together, ma. In that project, I discovered that a lot of money uh, is being given to uh, Nomadic Education Commission concerning this school, which you have said. But ma, if you get to most of these rural areas, there is no traces of all these schools. And if you go back to the federal government budget, come and see the huge amount of money being allocated to nomadic education. Sir, in one of my, in one of my write up, I challenge all the stakeholders, specifically Nigeria Institute of Animal Science, Animal Science Association of Nigeria, and Nigerian Society for Animal Production, and other stakeholders. If we come together, we will be able to checkmate this huge amount of money being allocated to nomadic education. Man, they are just sharing that money. They, you, can, you, you can go to, to, to the internet and check how this thing is going. But if you come together as a team, we will assist the nomadic education commission and be able to, because uh, they have a kind of a route. It is along that route that these schools are established. Sir, the teachers are not there, the schools are not where to be found, and they are, they, they are budgeting a lot of money to this. So, my suggestion is, with this conference, let us exchange the email so that we continue flagging most of this thing that comes together, and that is the only way we could use to checkmate the amount of money being allocated to nomadic education. Thank you, ma'am.
Thank you very much. I greet the father and the son for the uh, well-presented papers. When everybody was making comment, I laugh. Why did I laugh? The political terrain in this country may not support all these things that we are seeing. Corruption in the country might not give us any headway. You see, the last speaker was speaking about the money allocated. Where does the money go? The money will not get to the ultimate users. We all know that the cheese, the milk that we are producing in southwestern Nigeria, they are by nomads, the Fulani nomads. On investigation, we are able to detect that some of the Yorubas even bought cows, they hand over to these Fulanis to rear for them. And so, when the mo whatever is allocated will go to these big people and will not get to the Fulanis, where do we go from there? Now, that is my comment. Now, the question. The speaker, the son, let him listen, please. Uh -huh. The speaker mentioned that uh, animal protein, you have to take animal protein the first 1,000 days or whatever. I want to challenge him because we can get milk from soya. He won't decide. Plant protein, I know. But it's still not the same. So, uh, uh, please, please, I will, I will come to your class after this place. I want to seek knowledge and I'm learning. So, if we can get animal protein and uh, it's superior to plant protein, then it can be advocated. However, uh, Plant protein also is a good source of animal, is a good source of protein. Now, I don't want us to trivialize this, what I'm saying. You are the chairman, go and sit down in your place, sir. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, the whole thing will be beneficial to us if we actually put all these things to use. However, finance is always a problem. You want to establish pasture, you need finance. And apart from finance, where do you get land? In some, in some of these places, the inheritance policy does not allow a single individual to possess land. And if you purchase farmland without genuine uh, something, you are in trouble. So how do we go from here? Thank you. Thank you very much. Just for clarity's sake, let me just inform us that animal protein is superior to plant protein. You might, but that is the thing. We have what we call essential amino acids, and when you look at animal protein, animal protein consists mostly all essential animal protein. Why plant, I mean, all essential amino acids, why plant protein do lack in one or two of the essential amino acids? That settles that, please. Now, can we please move on? Can we please move on? There's a textbook here, if you are interested. It is titled, Essentials of the Commoner Tropical Pasture Species. It goes for a thousand, a thousand, please. You can see the ushers for a copy. Over to you, Dr. Amole. Thank you very much. I don't want to get into... <laughs> yes, but to be honest, there is nothing to debate about it. They are, they are different. Uh, and... Uh, yeah. Don't let us get into that. Uh, so, I didn't get any, I didn't get your question eventually, but I think the question, I mean, it's a good comment, and, uh, uh, no, sir, because your question was uh, going this way, so, all right, thank you for doing that. Ah, to move on, uh, the first one was talking about, do we need, do we want to promote more 
local breed more than the you know exotic to start with uh, all the animals we have now I mean 90 percent of the animals we have in Nigeria let's say dairy animal now they are all local and I'm not sure we've been able to feed them enough and that's the beginning of the crisis we have the first level of kidnapping starts with this set of people. So the national challenge we have as a security challenge is actually a feed insecurity because some people could not feed their animals and they became wild, blah, blah, blah. These animals, they are just within the size we know. At, at two years old, if you feed them well, you know, maybe a dairy, I mean, this Bokolo or uh, white fuller, they give you 200, 250. Now I'm bringing an animal that is about 800 kg. How do I feed that animal if I have not fed 250? Let's think deep. We have feed scarcity. We are bringing, we want to remove animals. I'm bringing large animals. You know how much a Frisian can consume? A animal that can give 20, 25 liters of milk. How many? How much liters of water will it take? So, when we talk about, let's improve, let's bring in, let's, let's first understand what the problem is. Because problems in Nigeria, most of the time, are being solved isolatedly, and it causes a lot of problems. If we don't solve it as a system, first, do we, are we, do we have feed sufficiency? No. As we are improving the genetic, we must not forget feed. Otherwise, you bring foreign animals that will never survive. Because local ones are also dying. That was what my father presented. In dry, in dry season, you see, the, if you want to do wedding and you want to buy animal cheap, buy it January, February. We are planning to go and buy more animals by January and February because it will be lean. And I know, once I see them, I know their capacity. I just know that it's feed that is their problem. I buy it cheap, take them and give them good and in fact the owner will not recognize it in two months. If that is happening now, how do we feed an animal that can consume 60, 70, 100 kg of I mean, dry matter of feed? We will be in trouble. So, I said first, can we improve our own animals? Can we move beyond can we do a better management of our animal? Can we promote management practices, good management practices, good feed, good, you know, management practices to improve the, the situation of our local animal? Then we start along the way, okay? I mean, parallel to that, we are doing genetic improvement. We are looking at selection among them and we are introducing genes that could improve them, yet not downsizing nutrition. Otherwise, we will, we, will bring, we will bring in fresh animal, we will do crossbred, we will still come back to feed. And you know most of, for example, you, I know why uh, Friesland is doing Greylando, because Greylando is more, is more tropical. Some years back, we started doing Friesian. And you cross Friesian, you have F1, you ask them to go and graze. Friesian, I mean, Friesians were never bred to graze. They are not good grazers. In two hours, they have not walked beyond that level. So they can't eat, so they die. You said they are not surviving. No, they are not supposed to be grazers. You have to breed them, have the F1 generation, keep them inside. You are the one that go and cut food for them. And bring water, everything you, I mean, that's what they do, where they are coming from. So, when we are de why we are developing our breed, we should not just, you know, in Nigeria, we do a lot of copy and paste, and we do a lot of copy wrong and copyright. As we want to copy and improve, let's do in our context. In our context. Again, we have a question on how information gets out to farmers from Iri. Generally, Nigeria has a very bad information flow. The only information that flows very well is bad one. Bad one. The day I learned that there is Federal Mortgage Bank, I used to know Federal Mortgage Bank in the days of NTA. Da, 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 Federal Mortgage Bank. Da, 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 da. I know it's the elders that we understand. I was very small. 
Do you know that the mortgage bank is still existing? Yes. People are still getting mortgage in Nigeria and they are paying for 50 years. Do we know? No. But nobody will tell you that. But if Buari or somebody fall down, where is, where is campaigning? Even a child in, in, <laughs> in pregnancy. We, so we have a general information flow problem. Even when, there is, when something is available, people will not even see it. So we do Farmer's Feast Day. We, do, we have websites. We do many things. We still create an avenue for farmers to know what we do. But if anybody is looking for information, then you are looking for information. Again, we have a poor extension system in the country. A research institute is not an extension institute. When we finish research, we expect extensionists to take it now into the bush. Now we see private people, it's free and career that is doing the extension for themselves. So that's why we have this break of information. But when we need information, we can easily get. In terms of the youths, were they agricultural youth? The answer is no. And the answer is yes. The state rolled out a call for anyone who is interested in agriculture to log in, and they gave them a space of time. I'm aware of that, that is whosoever to whom it may concern. So if you are in agriculture, if you don't go there, they won't come and give you at home. If you study Yoruba and you click in and you are selected, beautiful. Now, initially the state wanted to train 3,000, later it changed it to 10,000. But so far for the first time, he has been able to train 3,200 youth in agribusiness extensively. And I'm aware of that. Now, the plan is to engage them in public-private partnership. And that's why uh, Prof, Prof, sir, so that's why the system in Fashola, why it's going to work is that no youth will enter Fashola and sit down there and live the rest of his life there. It's a one-year, one-and-a-half-year rollout program. It's like an internship. It's like... Uh, uh, innovation, I mean, incubation internship. You are there for one year. Your investment could be one million. 20,000 out of your one million has been programmed to, to be paid to you every month as your stipend. It's part of your investment. Part of your one million will be used to procure feed and this and this for you. So you are doing your trade within your one million. And when you keep, so what you are going to eat has been provided. You are, you are going to live within a stipend of 20 to 25,000 as a youth. That's what government is giving, even a copper. And you are going to manage your business. From your business, a percentage is going back to the financier. A percentage is being kept for you. After a period of 18 months or 12 months, depending on the enterprise, you have, you have run your business under monitoring and you will rotate out of that hub to approach a commercial bank and say, this is what I've done for one year. Can you give me money to go and set my own? If that cannot work, then that's okay. But surely it's going to work in such a way that the son of one senator will not sit down within the hub and become the chairman. Everybody rotate out. Everybody rotate out with the expectation that if you have been trained within, it's like learning on job and then you have a proof that you have delivered well, you can talk to any commercial bank. And if they see your business plan, that is, that is meaningful. And that is why this will be different from the Awolo Wars. The Awolo Wars have done us well based on what they know. But now, government cannot set up a Greek, a Greek hub and manage it. No, it doesn't work elsewhere, like one of our elders said. It doesn't work. This one in Fashola is going to be private. Now, it's government that owns the land. It's private people that go, will come and say, okay, I need this place. And government give that land. And you build your private business there. Processing. There are facilities. I mean, government will provide road network. Government will provide electricity in that place to make your... But all you, the work you will use for your own business, you are going to provide it yourself. So since it's private, and you are not going to be the only... For example, we will have... Farmers who are dairy farmers, who will also be supplying Friesland. If Fan Mink want to come and set it up there, they are welcome. 
such kind of uh, LD competition keeps us going. A youth can say, Family is not paying me well. I'm going to Friesland. Friesland is there. And there is competition. And somebody else says, okay, I'm coming to break your monopoly. Once government set up anything, and that's why the farmer's field school will not, I mean, uh, what do you call it? Nomadic school will not work. And let us forget the money that has been going there. Otherwise, we will agitate ourselves for, for fun. Just really forget about that. Let's look at what can we do. For goodness sake, if teacher, now I've been, I've been employed to teach nomadic. I will be following them. This man is traveling from Cameroon to Bonu. From Bonu, he moves to Katsina. Katsina today, by the next two weeks, he's in Niger. Niger, he has found himself in Ishein. Before I know what to do, he has gone back to Maduguri. How do I follow such kind of person? Am I a nomadic person? It takes a nomadic person to teach a nomadic person. I can't teach the person. So I'll be collecting salary and I won't work. I'm not a nomadic fellow. So the system is we continue to, over time, encourage them to settle down. Nomadism is a, is a race, is a way of life. They are like the Texas cowboy of the seventeens. And over time, nobody will, will carry us and ride in the city of New York now and say, I mean, you are in Texas and you are throwing rope on everybody's neck. No. Advancement has gone beyond that. With time, these people begin to sit. Now, do you know, if you ask this man, sir, how many full and people are supplying you milk in Oyo? You know their numbers? So far, we need to say about 12,000. 12,000. How many of them are staying to supply you milk? Uh, Maybe. Maybe 10% of 12,000. Oh, I w let's even say 10%. That's a success story, sir. Ah, because some 10 years back, nobody will settle down and give you milk. That, if we continue and we, and we put more effort, this thing will work over time. There will be no place for anybody to work. Any other question? No, thank you. A round of applause as we have come to the end of the session. Thank you for listening. God bless you. A round of applause once again for the chair and the plenary speakers. Thank you very much. That was an extremely wonderful and exciting uh, and enlightening session. Right now, without wasting much time, we will go into our oral presentations. Uh, I've been asked to inform us that we will combine both presentations, the one that was supposed to hold earlier before now and the afternoon session. We will combine both presentations together. So we'll take all the oral presentations together at once and return in another two hours. Okay, so uh, for those who just joined us today, we have uh, group A and group B. Those presenting at the group A will be meeting at the multimedia room just upstairs and uh, those presenting at group B will be meeting at the reading room upstairs on this side of the library. So we expect to reconvene in another two hours so that we can have the closing ceremony. We we'll would see you in two hours please. <laughs> Whoa, so refreshing. What if I tell you peak yogurt is made from fresh cow milk? Oh, really? Come with me. We use pure, fresh, natural cow milk. Awesome! From here, the refrigerated milk is moved to the factory. Wow! Here, the nourishing goodness you love is produced. I only do fresh. <laughs> pick. Rich for your pick. I know I can be what I'm purposed to be. Here at Bowen University, regardless of my major, I am encouraged and equipped from the outset 
to be an entrepreneur. In addition to Bowen's foundation of godliness, excellence and leadership, I focus on my vision, work hard and build effectively on what our exceptional lecturers teach. I've got the Bowen touch. I stand out. I will fulfill my purpose. Bowen University. Excellence and godliness.